to address the soils in a, very, in a nutshell, uh, the lava flows that we have that underlie everything are relatively recent geologically speaking, 15 million years ago. So it's kind of everything that's on top of it has come in since then. So we don't have any, for the most part, where the grapes are growing in the Yakima Valley, the soils are, were either brought in by rivers, like the Columbia River, or they were blown in as luss, which is a, a sandy loam. We, there, and the soils are very either gravelly or sandy. We don't have any clay here. Which so, is why we don't have phylloxera. But it, they're also very well, they're very well drained soils. And, and generally speaking, they're, very, they're not very fertile. So, um, and they're consi it's consistent. We don't have clay, we don't have, and the, the water drains through really well, which is great for grapes and other, other fruit uh, crops as well. So it's, that makes it uniformly, uh, uh, our soils are uniformly good for growing grapes up here. You can so, see we are in a rain shadow. It's the only place we have uh, uh, agriculture out here is where, it's, where we put water down and irrigate. And um, we're going to zoom into the Yakima Valley here. And we're going to start out now. Barb, you can stop right there. Uh, Carrie's going to take you through some of the vineyards. But what I want to point out is we're going to start over here. We are up in Yakima, which is right, right there. <laughs> this is Union Gap. We're going to come, you're going to drive through there. We were right there last night at Owen Row. And you can see this is the Rattlesnake River. <coughs> it falls all the way down to Red Mountain, which is right there. And so the grapes that, we, that, we, that we're primarily going to talk about and you're going to see today grow along this slope. And a lot of this is uh, the lower valley down by the, by the river is deeper soils, hops, corn, hay, potatoes, wheat, things like that. The, the vineyards are up along the margin here, not in the bottom, not at the top. You can see there's nothing up here. That's too rocky and high. Uh, they grow in this zone right along the edge. So we talk a lot about in, there's a lot of wineries in Washington State that are located in Seattle or in Walla Walla, but most of those uh, wineries either started with fruit from the Yakima Valley or still source the majority of their fruit from the Yakima Valley because we were the large, it's the most significant um, grape growing region in Washington State also because we grow the best grapes. Um, in addition to being most and best, we were also the first growers to be the first growing region to be established um, in Red Willow. Um, but they were, they've been very innovative and they've done a lot of things. They've also worked with WSU and done a lot of research in their vineyard because Washington is um, exceptional in the amount of research that we do in the state, which although we're very young, we are incredibly proactive. We share everything, so it's very different from California. And it really means that our quality does nothing but continue to get better by leaps and bounds very, very quickly. And it's one of the things that makes Washington such an exciting industry right now is that it's very, it's incredibly dynamic, it's incredibly innovative, and it continues to get, we're learning new things with world-class research in a lot of different areas that go on here, and all the research stuff is based here in the Yakima Valley as well. Um, so Red Willow has a, uh, if you look at the bottle that labels, uh, the bottle that uh, David makes at Owen Row, they have the chapel on it because they, they built Sorrel Likes of You. And so they have a, a replica of the chapel of Hermitage on top of their hill. But it's a very, like I was saying, there's a lot of microclimates. They have Syrah planted, they're a, they have Syrah planted on various aspects and slopes of the hill and they all have slightly different characteristics and slightly different flavors. And one of the really fascinating things that is really only in the last 15 years that we're starting to do is look at all those microclimates. What is the difference between the east side of their hill versus the west side of their hill? And um, it's a, a fairly new trend in the Washington industry to to look at to look for that diversity in those those really special spots and, and all of those, those nuances. So you would say how many uh, wineries buy from Red Willow? Do you know? Uh, Eighteen, I think. So. so uh, which is pretty common. There are 900 wineries in Washington and 300 vineyards, orders, orders of magnitude. So a lot of a lot of people are looking to the, those benchmark type, those iconic vineyards, and Red Willow is one of them. So Red Willow sells grapes to wineries in Seattle, Woodinville, Yakima, the Yakima Valley, uh, 
Walla Walla, these grapes go all over the state. The, and oftentimes, since we are, you may not hear the term Yakima on all these bottlings, but you're going to see vineyards, each of these vineyards go into wines that are uh, world renowned. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, at, because it is dispersed like that in some ways, it's different from Napa where everything's in one little spot. That isn't, that isn't to say these grapes aren't some of the best that you'll find in the world. It's just, we're, it, it's, it, it's more that they, are, they go so many places that you hear about them here and there. And they, I, had a, I had a person come into my tasting room the other day and says, I don't know about Yakima, but I really like Red Willow. I'm like, Red Willow is, yeah, that's a, the, that is the consummate Yakima Valley vineyard. So, so just so you get it, we're going to show you these places and what makes Yakima such a special place. Very unique. Okay, so we're going to fly over. You're going to go through Union. That's Union Gap. It's, it's where the Yakima River cuts through. That's where we were last night. You recognize that little valley we're in where we had dinner. And we're going to fly over to the, to the east. We're going down the ridge line. And this is Elephant Mountain. And it's one of the higher vineyards in the Yakima Valley. That's where we're heading today. It goes up to about 4,500 feet at the top. I'm sorry, 1,450 feet at the top. And uh, again, we're, we're at the margins, upper slopes where the soils are thin and uh, it's, it's protected. We're kind of bouncing down along. This is going past a vineyard called Pollard. Robin Pollard was there last night. First cup of Bronco, how do you guys taste it? Very good one. And that's her vineyard right there again. You can see it's, uh, there's, it's a little patchworky down here. There's apples and cherries as well. This is called Two Blondes. It's an it's a Andrew Will vineyard. Andrew Will is one of our iconic uh, established wineries here. This is another one called Porteus. Beautiful red, red wine grapes growing in this vineyard. And now we're going to, we're going to can over to the southeast and fly down to Snipes Mountain, which is a ridge in the middle, so we're flying over kind of the flat lower part of the valley. This ridge pops up in the in the in the valley, and it is a sub ABA, one of the smaller sub ABAs of the Yakima Valley. Very unique. Some of the oldest vineyards in the state are planted here, uh, dating back to 1917. Mm -hmm. So this is the up part of the upland vineyard. You can see it has a north slope, and, and well as well as a south slope where it says upland. Uh, typically on Snipes Mountain, north side tends to be more whites. Uh, south side tends to be more reds. There's some Grenache planted there. We did this presentation and we did a tasting associated with it. And we'll fly along the mountain. It's about 10 miles long. There's the Ross Camp Vineyard on the top. Which is where Co gets the Syrah from that you guys probably tasted last night. Mm -hmm. And then that little blurb, it says Muscat of Alexandria. Then there's Harrison Hill Vineyard on in town of Sunnyside, which was planted early 60s, late 50s. Now we're going up to Carey's Vineyard, the Brule, back up to the, to the Rattlesnake Ridge area. And you can see uh, the Brule Vineyard. Pause it right there for a sec, Barb. So you can see um, the slopes and the different aspects in our vineyard. I like to talk about De Brule as a microcosm of what makes the Yakima Valley and essentially Washington such a cool spot. So we grow six different varietals. The Riesling is from let's see, that block, the top of the hill, um, because now you can't plant north of the canal. And it's important to be up as high as you can. Those vines are grandfathered in. But um, as we talk about frost protection, you can see that the um, cold air is heavy. So it's already moving when it comes down to our vineyard, and it keeps going, draining down into those valley floors below. So that's why um, it's so important, again, to be up high. And you can see in this from this perspective that you've got all that slope and all of that all that air movement and great air drainage and so we rarely we have natural protection from frost um, then our vineyard is on a south facing slope here so we have cabernet planted in the very steep part of the vineyard because you get more heat, heat accumulation and then as you get lower down where it's not not as steep we have merlot planted uh, bob betts likes to he bob betts master wine says that every Grape would be red if it could, every grape would be Cabernet if it could, and the best Cabernet in the state of Washington is De Brule Vineyard Merlot. So, <laughs> so uh, we've got, there's beautiful Merlot grown in Washington state. Our vineyard does some wonderful examples. It's a pretty major component of the carriage house, uh, carriage house blend. 
But uh, we also have then the so our hillside blend, the Cote Bonneville, we're very Burgundian at, at Cote Bonneville because we look at the we look for those nuances and that variation. So we do one blend from the hillside, and then the carriage house actually comes from this little triangle because the soil is so different, the aspect's so different that we blend based on soil profile, which is one of those things again that if you look at the consistency of soils across the Yakima Valley, but then the variation you get from two blocks that are 50 yards apart, it's really a fascinating area that's worth it's worth more than 24 hours, really. So we do invite you to come back when you know, you can. Um.